And with that, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're most definitely going to want to check this out. Welcome to Jailbreak. Nice. Nice. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> And before we start this video, I'm going to ask you to hit that like, share, and subscribe, as well as the little bell next to the subscribe button so you're notified of all new videos. Here we go. I can already see it in the comment section, people. How dare you compare a fifth generation Toyota 4Runner to the legendary straight front axle Land Cruiser 80 series? Well, Unlike most people, I'm in a very unique position because I can almost guarantee that in the last 10 years, I have put more miles on an incredibly heavy, heavily modified 80 series and an incredibly heavily modified 5th gen than most people will ever. I can say that pretty safely. There's not too many people that put 300K on an 80 series and then did every trail in the United States. I have. So there's that. But as time went by, I had pretty much lived out of that truck for years and have done every single trail. And she did every trail I ever pointed her at, no problem. My 80 series was like a Canon DSL. All I had to do was point and shoot. And that truck would get me there and get me back every time, every time. And that footage you just saw, the truck's covered with red dirt on the side because earlier on... Cane Creek in Moab, I tipped her over. We stood her back up and kept on going. But time doesn't wait for anybody. And as the years went by, there wasn't really much else I could possibly do with the 80 series, and it was time for a new platform. So I jumped over to a 5th gen 4Runner. And I knew absolutely nothing about 4Runners, except I had to build this into an absolute beast. I had to. Something had to fill the footprints of the green monster. So, it began. And oddly enough, this video isn't actually the final build of my truck. This video is about a guy that inspired me to take what I thought was already a completely hands-down monster 5th gen, one-of-a-kind build to the next level. One day while doing research, after finishing up my truck, everything is possibly done, and somebody posts a video called The Ultimate Forerunner. Hey guys, welcome back to Sandy Cuts. So today we're going to talk about my 2019 TRD Premium Forerunner. This is the first Forerunner platform I had. I overbuilt it like crazy, wheeled it pretty hard. I broke a lot of parts, which you guys probably know from my other videos. And instead of doing the smart thing and removing weight, like for example, I had a 400 pound rear bumper, which I'm still gonna put a really, really heavy rear bumper on this. I decided to do my thing and overbuild it even more. 
So I'm on the East Coast building a truck just to make it a one-of-a-kind, bulletproof, monster truck. It has to stand up and fill the shoes of the green monster. And I discover another guy on the exact opposite. He couldn't be any further away in California doing the exact same thing. But the strange thing about this is neither one of us are mechanics by trade at all. Neither one of us knew each other, and we were both building the identical truck. The only difference was he's a rock crawler overlander. I'm an overlander rock crawler. So this video is going to get really in-depth on his build. And when this video series on his build is done, I'm going to bring out the final one on my truck. So it'll be out in the next week or so. And if you want to see how to build a fifth gen that can actually hang with the big boys on the serious trails, you're going to want to listen close because he goes in depth on this build. And there's a lot of subtle things that you won't see anyplace else. So I'm going to hand it over to Oleg. Here you go, brother. All right, I'm here with Oleg from Sandy Cats out in California once again. And last time we were here, you were working on the truck, but since I've seen you last, the truck has come, come along exponentially because last time she was sitting over here, you were still working on it. This time, she just ran the Rubicon. Yep. With a bunch of 80 series? No problem, bro. That's insane, dude. <laughs> that is insane. So I'm stoked to see this. I'm glad I was able to make it back. I'm glad you guys could spare the time <clears throat> Let's start with the ass end of the truck because you tried, what was it, two or three bumpers that you literally had built and designed? Is, well, that, is that accurate to say? I rebuilt, redesigned aftermarket bumpers that were available and kept breaking them. What, did, what, what do you mean they kept breaking? What didn't you like about them? So I, my favorite bumper was the Southern Style of Road bumper. It, was like a, it had a tailgate on it like this, which made it really usable. Um, I broke the tire carrier on it, I want to say every 500 to 1,000 off-road miles. Was that with a 37 or just it a 35? That was with a 34. 34. 34. All right. Um, and then eventually I completely rebuilt that thing from scratch, made it super heavy duty, super heavy weight. And the only way I was able to make it work is when I turned it into a 500 pound bumper. So that wasn't working for me. All right. <laughs> so <clears throat> you showed this to me in the first thing I saw. When you saw the C4 bumper that I had on mine, you were impressed. Yes. And I was impressed that you were impressed. Yes. I was like, nice. <laughs> because almost 100,000 miles, it's still holding a 37, no problem. Yep. Granted, I haven't done the Rubicon, but I've done a ton of off-roads, washboards, the stuff that usually shakes it loose. So far, so good. But it ain't this. I didn't even know this is what you had in mind. Can you explain this as deep as you want to go or whatever? Sure. And let me ask you one thing before I forget. You said the other bumpers failed. Yep. Did you ever, did, did your wife's truck, the, the Lexus get you damaged? Forerunner, the white Forerunner. So she had a Expedition 1 bumper, which I loved. It was so usable, so user friendly. Um, I'd say after maybe 2,000 off-road miles, tire carriers started cracking. I rewelded it, put on new gussets, and that transferred it to crack of the hinge another thousand miles later. Oh. Basically, I bent the whole tailgate like area of my wife's you know, vehicle and I can't fix it or I don't want to fix it. I don't know, but I'm not going to fix it. So and your she's wife's, not happy. Your <laughs> wife's vehicle is on 34s. Yes, that, Everyone was on a, else, that was on a 34. The rest of the world will call them 35s because it's, you know, yeah. five and a half inches. <laughs> no, it's six, I'm telling you. <clears throat> is that the same vehicle that you actually did that race over at the King of the Hammers? Um, I did a race on it with it, yes. And one. And one. That is gangster. <laughs> That's the truck that you, myself, and the 80 Series did Big Bear in. White right? Foreigner, yep. Yep, all right, cool. All right, at any rate, enough of that. Let's talk about this rear bumper and have at it. Sure. So, I mean, I love the C4, just to be clear. Out of all the plug and play bumpers I've seen, I think the C4 is fantastic it's going to be the strongest holds the most amount of weight um, i just didn't want something that heavy and i wanted something super custom for my use this bumper is like a pre-runner style bumper that's tubular um, outgear solutions made the bottom end of it and i loved it and outgear solutions also made the top end we just had it a little bit customized for me and i'll kind of show you how it works so this handle, um, it's one of the biggest things for me. So this is, part- Dude, is that titanium? That is titanium, yes. No way. But more importantly, if you look over here, take a look over here, you see that? The entire weight of the vehicle fell on this section, this little section. Like I popped off a rock over here, popped off a rock over here. I see it, Popped I see off it. a rock and I hit 
my entire way. The guy behind me said he saw sparks flying everywhere. And it didn't break. It didn't break and it still functions. <laughs> no problem. And I mean, come on, man. I mean, the evidence, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. Stand by. So you bounce off a rock. Yep. You catch it right here. Yep. And you finished up right here. Yep. All the weight and throwing sparks and still works. Yep. <laughs> that is one hell of a, uh, wow. All right. So, so, so I'll show you how it kind of works. Very simple. You just pull the pin up and that's a safety pin, but that's it. I mean, just open it off. It's smooth as hell. And that's the bumper. My biggest thing that I wanted, and I don't recommend this for everybody, is a single swing out. A single swing out is very difficult to deal with for a daily driver. Hard to, you know, open this up in a parking lot. And I think I got like 400 pounds of weight on this. Uh, and it's handling it no problem. But I wanted that because I wanted a really big kitchen. So now with the single swing out, I have a full size table to work with. And that's important for me. I gotta open this up really fast. That's okay. Uh, just, cool. Just to grab something. All right, so uh, while you're getting that ready, when you say that this setup is uh, is exactly what you wanted, you just did you just did a two truck whole family yes two weeks off the beaten path three weeks three weeks total in Idaho yes and proved all this yes. so not only did you do the Rubicon in this doing a little bit of test proof I mean doing the Rubicon in a four, in a forerunner when you're running with eighties. It's usually a bad day. It's a bad day, especially when you're built out like an overlander. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. So this is gonna be in another video. Our trucks are just about identical. Like it's, that's how I met you. Yeah. I'm sitting there, I saw the video, the ultimate forerunner, I'm like, who says things like that? <laughs> and I went, hey, that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? But yours is crawling, off-roading, overlanding, yep. mine's overlanding, off-roading, crawling. Exactly. The slight differences, but this bumper, I couldn't pull off in the way, in overlanding, I couldn't get away with this because I'd be too limited in too many places. But for what you do, it's mint. Now, show, this is just poetry in motion. This is the smartest setup I've seen. And the only good thing about my nomadic lifestyle is I meet a lot of people with ridiculous amounts of build. So go ahead, brother. So yeah, so like, for me, it was getting a fast kitchen because I have a wife and I have, a, at the time, two and four-year-old, now three and five. Yeah, you lost one of those on the trail. Right? <laughs> if anybody sees his kid, no, we're just kidding, you know? So, and I need it fast. I need it super fast. And this is what I built out. Basically, I popped this open, and my wife desperately wanted hot water instant. So, bam, that's all I gotta do. And it's always connected to a propane tank in the back. Just give it a second, let it heat up. You can see a fire going, and that's it. I mean, it's 100. You can touch that, Richie. Tell me if it's hot. I'm a plumber, so I know what an instant hot is. It's that super is, hot. It's um, instantly hot. So now we can wash dishes, do everything we need as far as cooking. On the other side, um, I have another button over here for more water. So there, that's where. So, so on the other side, I have another water system that we get instant drinking water. You can control the water flow as well. Um, so you don't you conserve water as, as little as you want. So we use that side for cooking, this side for washing ourselves and so on, and for drinking water. That's kind of how we roll. And this is this is the same setup that you were selling to the military. Yes. These things have been flying off the shelves. Yes. That is a killer setup. A motorized jerry can. I mean, you can't ask for better than that. We will leave a link in the description below if that's cool with you. Yeah, no. So if you don't mind. For a little bit of self promotion, yeah, we sell the cap. Everything's built in the cap. So the whole point of this is you have this water system. You also have shower attachments and whatever. We're not going to probably show that, but there's a lot of attachments and you just switch the cap. So if you have five tanks like this, you keep switching the cap. You don't have to deal with pouring water. Oh, that, that's what makes it really cool. That is smart. Um, while we're back here, I'll sh You know what I mean? While we're back here, I'll show you really fast. The trash bag. I don't know why, but the trash bag for me was such a headache because every single system was either too small, too big. And I kept having to take out the trash bag every night to deal with bears and throw it in the car. Then I found this one. I will give you the name because I don't remember what it is. And all you do is unhook it here, unhook it here. And now I could take this, throw it in the car and not worry about bears and stuff. Plus it's, it seals like a waterproof right, bag. Right, right. That's like a, yeah. That so is. it's super functional. And I prefer this over anything now. I mean, it took me a while to figure this out, but I love it. Back here, I also have, this is for my hot water heater. This is my diesel. I basically have a diesel heater and clip I keep right my diesel in. on the outside. I can extend it, I clip it in, bam, diesel. So everything is on the outside. 
Now, did all this work as, as planned on the road? Everything worked as planned on the road 100% except for on the Rubicon one night, the diesel line froze. So I'm still gonna, I'm probably gonna find a way to insulate this a little bit, but this line actually froze on the Rubicon. There's gotta be an additive that goes in there too. Right? I don't know. So, something like that. I wouldn't have imagined diesel fuel would have froze. But I didn't either, but it happened. plugs, I guess that's what that means. This is a very, very, very functional. And worst case scenario, if you've got to pull this apart, because you gotta get your spare, it's not a big deal. These straps, it's everything is just strapped. That's I love these, beautiful. I forgot the company that makes them, a uh, roller cam or something. These straps are like, they're solid, I trust them. Like they're super, you put them on once and they just hold. I don't know nice. why. Um, I also have a high lift here, hidden pretty well. I know now, high lifts are. I, dude, I, I, I love high lifts. my high lift. I have no issue with it. A high lift is like an ex-girlfriend. Treat it correctly or it'll kill you. Yeah, 100%. And that's all there is to and it. I've been I mean, hitting the head of the high lift once. Yep, and I've been hitting the head with, <laughs> with an X point, so <laughs> it's all good. So going back here. Let's just, let's just take a minute to just drink this all in. Dude, that is a beautiful setup, man. Wow. Because, I mean, I was here last year at this exact time. I had just finished up with some yep. company. Out, I think it was Stellar Belt. Yep. Well, it took me from last year till now to get the truck squared away. But now that I'm back... This is the third iteration. This is the third iteration. This is, this is eight months of work. Just this right, bunker, right. getting it dialed in, the, building it, and like powder coating it. Powder coating took two days. This is eight months of work and blood, sweat, and tears, and I don't know, at least a thousand pounds of metal to get to this point. But I'm stoked. I'm happy. So is this all your design, or is no. this your design, their design with you modifying on top of it? Both, yeah. It's their design, our gear stuff. So our gear, in my opinion, there's other companies out there, right? That do tubular bumpers. I'll tell you right now, like Wenworks, I, I wouldn't promote them because they're beautiful, but they shake like crazy. Uh, you, um, that's what you had on the white truck when I no, was here. No, last. I didn't, I never had that one. Was that, it on this one? No, I never had that bumper. I just know it very well. That's the, that's the, I would say that's the one that people decide. Wenworks or out gear. Wenworks is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit prettier. It's sexier, but it shakes. This, when I saw this bumper, I'm like, okay, this may actually work. And when I went out to the guy's factory, I paid, I paid him full price online because I didn't want to like ask for any discounts. And then after I paid him full price, I went to him and I'm like, hey, can I actually see this in person before I commit to waiting eight months on a design? And this thing is rock solid, it's insane. And I realized it's not gonna shake at all. And therefore that's why I got it. And then we modified the table to it. We did a little bit of modifications. The handle came out. We were kind of like working on a handle thing. Um, and you know, I'm happy, I'm stoked. So how about this? Let me say this a different way. If somebody sees this setup and wants to buy it, can you make that happen? Because um, I know you, this is just a small part of the shop, yeah. but notice the new plasma table. Clearly <laughs> no, so you guys I'm aren't not, messing around. But I'm it, not messing around, but I'm not gonna take anything away from Outgear. Right, um, right, right, right now with Outgear, I think you could buy this whole setup. I don't think you could get this table yet though. Uh, but I, I know that they're gonna be working on an option to sell this type of table to the masses very soon. Cool, cool. Well, we'll leave a link to them as well. And you're happy with them? Everything's worked out well? I am so well. happy. Like, this is, and this is insanely happy. <laughs> All right. So, much like myself, I think that was one of the reasons we decided to actually meet in person is that you refuse to let anybody work in your truck because every time, no matter the dollar amount, no matter the time, no matter the promises, no matter the reviews, they fucked you. Pretty much. Well, it's okay. So, I'll, I'll tell you this. I've, I've been... Jeep, I got a Jeep behind you on 40s. Um, and back in 2012, I had zero problems with shops. When 2016 rolls around, 2017 rolls around, everybody's getting a lot of work. They don't have time to do custom jobs. Every shop that I went to with my Jeep initially, I think Huntington Beach Jeep had like a, a shop in the back too, charged me a crazy amount of money and just band-aids everything. No actual time into thought into how to fix a problem, they just band-aid it. And that's what I had with the Jeeps. Then I got the Toyota, and when I had wanted to do plug and play stuff, there's a great shop, and I love this shop, and I'll, I'll say this shop is the only shop I still go to for like alignment stuff, RPM Garage. They did great stuff. But when it comes down to doing a heavy modification, things that require a lot of parameters, where your suspension, you've got to think about how one part is gonna flow with another part. I just haven't found, and I tried, and I haven't found a shop that will do that for you other than just bolting things up hoping everything works and sending you out the door right and and you know you go to a real reputable shop like rpm they'll tell you straight up like we'll do this some of this work for you but you know we're not going to do it all for you because there's so much thought you're talking about months and years of thought to go into building a rig like this in reality a real a real solid yeah 
forerunner, fifth yes. generation forerunner, yes. a soccer mom car that can literally hang with 80 series on the Rubicon, rolling 37s with a Dana 60. So that, that led to the shop. I mean, honestly, I, I had no plans on having a shop. I was hoping to just give my forerunner. It's not your job. It's not <laughs> yeah. your gig. You know I, was, I, mean? I was hoping to get my forerunner to a shop and get it back like this. And once I realized that's just not a reality, um, unless, uh, at least from every single shop I know, it's not a reality. I got the shop and I spent about a year building it. <laughs> I don't know. And, and in that year's time or more, I don't know how much more research you've done on other things like rooftop tents, but you've developed your own products, not just the shower tent. You've also got probably one of the sickest uh, uh, tow rope. Yeah, Re kinetic recovery ropes. Yeah. Kinetic recovery rope advertisement I've ever seen. You took that giant Escalade out front, yep. tied it to a tree, and then <laughs> sent it. <laughs> I, did that, I did that like 40 times, by the way. That's, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll that'll be in the video. That and and I, I did that on the Jeep, too, and actually broke some ropes, too. But it was just a fun time. Um, yeah, I mean, this whole Sandy Cats adventure thing has started about two and a half years ago from me just like telling people the truth about stuff. And uh, then I did the showers and I tried to tell people how to build themselves. Eventually that turned into a business. Ropes, I was just trying to test ropes and show the market, the people, you know, qu difference in quality on ropes. And that turned into a small little business. And you know, the biggest, the biggest project that we're working on is rooftop tents. And that's always been my idea for two and a half years, rooftop tents. And I wanted a rooftop tent design. It's hard to explain this. Don't explain it yet. <laughs> okay. But I'll say this, nobody's done this yet. You're going to make it so that some people can customize these yep. themselves to fit their particular vehicle yep. easily. Yep. Leave it at that. More to come. Okay. Don't put it out there because <laughs> someone's going to hear it. They're going to try to steal it. And I hate to see that happen. Uh, you know. All right. So let's take a look. This isn't strictly an overlander. He does not have the rooftop tent strapped to the top, but otherwise he has everything else. So really fast overlanding stuff more. This bridge slide. I, to get this to work, I had to cut up my fridge. I had to cut up the slide to get it all to fit, but it fit. Um, this was another reason. This came after my big trip with my family because we had the Tilton slide fridge, which I've used for three years and I loved it. Uh, but my wife wasn't happy because you got to lift the whole fridge up and it's like 80 pounds of weight plus and 10 times a day when you got kids. So finally installed this. This works on a shock. So it's, you know, just goes right up and goes in. Because the other ones, the ones that tilt out, you actually have to bear yep. the weight yep. to pull it up. For only a quarter so, second. But right, yeah. but still, but still with kids and a wife, and it, there's, yeah. you know. It's not great. You want to make them, you want to make this whole process as enjoyable as possible so you can get out in the dirt more. Exactly. Period. Exactly. Well said. I'll be, yeah, like exactly what Richard said. Before I did this build, my wife would said she'd take, she'd go with me for three, four days. Now she goes with me for three weeks and she's happy. So that's what matters to me. Um, over here, I got extra batteries back there. I got a, actually, I should probably show the electric. I got it. So, these are front runner straps. It took me a while to figure it out, but I love them. The stretchets? Yeah. Yeah, they're awesome. awesome. They're awesome. I didn't want to spend 40 bucks on a strap. They're, they are awesome. I've got, they're later. holding everything in my truck down. This is my diesel heater. Nice. Mine's um, at my house. I wish it was here. This. It's and you love the front battery. runner wolf patch, right? Yeah. Backup battery. Um, these are the fire pit thingies that you do for paint fires. Honestly, I've never, I never use these. I don't know what it is. It makes, it makes a campfire. You okay. connect up a paint tank, it makes a campfire. Um, it's good for places in California where it's illegal to have campfires. It's everywhere, brother. It's no, not just Idaho. California. Idaho is legal everywhere. Everywhere Idaho is Colorado. Legal. Most of the places I went through so far this year, there was a fire ban. So. But what I like to use this for is when I need to make a fire and I have all my wood is wet. I just throw it on top and I dry it out really fast. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and then I got about 120 pounds of tools here. Um, so don't I. I'm, I'm big it's a that. habit. Yep. It's a habit. I'd, ra I'd rather deal with that and then have one less person in the truck. So. And then I have a full electrical system over here, which includes a Battleborn, a Red Arc, um, and just a full electrical build out. I almost, I've been carrying a spare Red Arc 1250 yep. for, since I was here last time. I almost literally just gave it away. The next day it fell, Ooh, and I had to swap me. it out in the parking lot. It, my entire me. electrical system went down. Two years in the back, all yep. conditions, elevations. I'm not complaining. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, but yeah, look, you know, electrical is important, no matter Big you know. Time. So I, I do carry this guy, um, 
as a backup. Yep. And I, I, the only time I ever use this is if I take my Starlink so I could go away and plug the Starlink in this. Right. Otherwise, I never use this, but I carry it as a backup because I don't want to kill a three week trip and go home early. I believe, I believe almost all of us have an eco flow. Yep. It's a, it's a good form factor and they hold a the charge forever, so. And then I have my, you know, Goose Gear drawer system. I love Goose Gear. Um, I have my Goose Gear drawer systems here with all my, you know, camping stuff. Pretty, pretty much always running like this. Yes, this jet boil. Yeah, I, I got one too. I love it, man. This, I, I bought that uh, partner steel one, four hundred dollar partner steel stove, and I hated it. Me too. I love this because the adjuster, you could adjust the flame. Yeah. You know, I love. You it. can cook two pots. Yep. For real, like in real life. Yep. You know what I mean? So yes, it so, takes up a lot of room in the drawer. It's worth. But it's it. worth its, it's worth weight. It. Yeah. I think. And then I have a bunch of these MSRs because. One for coffee, one for tea, one for milk for the kids. Now, when you're not when you're not uh, off roading or thinking about off roading or thinking <laughs> about thinking about off roading, I'm dead. You do crazy things like yeah. ice climbing and mountaineering, right? Yes, uh, I've been mountaineering. I've been rock climbing since I was a kid. Then I started mountaineering. Um, last couple, I don't know. Last year we've done like the biggest one I did, I guess, was a uh, Pico de Orizaba in Mexico. That's like eighteen thousand. Um, a couple of months ago, I'd say. But yeah, I do all that stuff. And I do search and rescue for LA County Mountain Search and Rescue. So I'm the guy that usually goes up in the snow and ice, try to rescue the idiots that went up there without the gear. Big foot without gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? So yeah. All right, so is that the... Uh, that's the overlanding setup. That's the rear much. end? Okay. Yep. It looks, the, it's, the way you set it up too, it's very SEMA friendly. SEMA friendly and you know, I, I was supposed to be at SEMA this year, but oh, then... Oh, were you? <laughs> How come you didn't go? Let's I got, I got invited for like a top 10 builder vote thing on this truck. And uh, last minute, my buddy said they want to do the Rubicon. And I'm like, do I want to sit five, six days in a Vegas hotel waiting for, to get my truck back from SEMA? Or do I want to spend three, four days on the Rubicon? And I just went on the Rubicon instead. Good for <laughs> you. you know? It's a good... I, I love it's it's awesome that your truck got picked because that means if my truck was up there, chances are it would have been close by. Maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't have watched. Trust me, like I sold other trucks after the event. I would have got like, you know, yeah, but seventh place. <laughs> I just learned this recently. A lot of the truck at SEMA come on a flatbed. One hundred percent. They're trucks with things bolted on, but you can't actually drive. I was them. so I was on the That's phone. Kinda lame to me. I was on a Zoom call with the other competitors. And they're all talking about bringing their trucks on and enclosed trailers, $5,000 car washes and so on. And I'm like, I'm just going to drive my truck out there. And that's when I realized, you know, it's probably not the right competition for me. I'd rather be at the Rubicon. I hear you. <laughs> you <know>? Good call. <laughs> right, I got to change back. Yeah. So this side has all my recovery gear, which is a lot of stuff, actually. Okay. These are for my lights. Shovels, love this shovel. They don't make them anymore, but this is the smartest design for a shovel ever. Axe, sole with a backup blade, very important. Because you never know when you're cutting trees to get to the trail. That's Another right. backup saw. Uh, but somewhere in here, all my recovery ropes. But my newest addition, which I'm so stoked to have, is my welder. Uh, Bun trail welders. Wow. And when we we're on the Rubicon, uh, one of the 80 series broke their pan hard bar. Which and is common. Did it rush right off the axle by chance? No, it broke in the middle. Oh, okay. And uh, what we did is we used this and we used four wrenches, welded the wrenches around. Yep. And that's how we got off the trail. It, it worked the whole time. And it welds to dense metal, no problem. This welder is insane. All right, I gotta get it. So up. it's right, awesome. Send me the link. <laughs> I didn't know that was it. I thought it was a totally yeah, different. Yeah, no, it's super. Setup. It plugs right into your batteries. I'm talking about the box. No, no, that no. mounts in the truck. Then you bring the no, leads no. off it. But I've seen Rory use that. I think. I think I saw. But that just goes right into your batteries. You just clamp it onto your batteries, and that's it. That is sweet. Don't forget the gear on top of your truck because I'm gonna have you pull the truck yeah. out in a minute. Okay, due to my location, I'm gonna limit this video to 30 minutes. But part two and the final chapter to this where we cover the engine, suspension, interior, and everything else will be out within the next three or four days. And then after that, the final walk around of my entire build will be out as well. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and leave a comment below and I will return the favor. I am out.